Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. This is Jenny's Plan with Me. 2020 is almost over, and we're all experiencing this really challenging year together. I hope the COVID situation is better where you are. And in the U.S., the quarantine is still going on, and I'm still stuck at home, spending a lot of time on Netflix. Speaking of which, have you watched this popular Netflix show, The Queen's Gambit? If you haven't watched it yet, I highly, highly recommend it. So for my husband's December budget setup, I'm going to do a chess theme inspired by The Queen's Gambit. You don't really need any knowledge about chess to understand the setup. So without further ado, now let's get started. Since the chess are all black and white, here I'm going to mainly use Sakura Pigma pens and gouache paint in this video. And I'll leave the information and links to all the supplies I use in the description box down below for you to check out. On the left side of the cover page, I choose to draw a big queen chess piece. Actually, the show's name Queen's Gambit is the name of a move, a chess opening strategy. Not really about the queen chess piece. But Elizabeth Harmon, the main character in the show, is definitely the queen of chess. So I just decided to draw one here. By the way, I just learned how to play chess not that long ago, so if I say anything wrong in the video, please let me know. I believe chess is Beth only true love, so I also add a red heart here, which turns out pretty cute, and I really like it. On the right side, I use alphabet stamps to stamp December, and usually I wouldn't write on the year, but this is the last setup in 2020. I do want to make a little bit different from the previous ones. Then under it, I want to draw out our chess queen Elizabeth Harmon. This one is based on the show poster in which she has her classic poster and face sitting in front of the chessboard. As I'm drawing here, I want to quickly introduce the story to some of you who hasn't watched it yet. The Queen's Gambit is a seven-episode American mini show based on Walter Tavis' 1983 novel of the same name. The story begins in Lexington, Kentucky, where a nine-year-old Beth, having lost her mom in a car accident, is taken to an orphanage where she is taught chess by the building's custodian, Mr. Shabble. As was common during the 1950s, the orphanage dispenses daily tranquilizer pills to the girls, which turns into an accident for Beth. She quickly becomes a strong chess player due to her visualization skills, which are enhanced by the tranquilizers. A few years later, Beth is adopted, and starts from there. Her chess journey goes all the way to national game, and even further. During which she faces loss, makes true friends, gets out of drug abuse, and eventually becomes a master chess player. Let's talk about the show more later. And now let's get back to the cover page. Here I use O3 fine liner pen to draw the shapes and graphic one to emphasize the outlines and add shadows. Then color her clothes with squash black paint. At the end, I also use the pencil to highlight her lips a little bit. If you watched my other December Plan with Me video, you know I'm pretty obsessed with this tearing style these days. So here, I want to add more on the left up corner too. I actually don't have black paper on hand, so I print one on regular paper, glue it on, and then cut the extra part away. But still, not feel well balanced, and something's missing, so I decided to put some washi tapes on. The one I'm using here is from Amanda Richley Shop. I also made a notebook and washi tape review video about it, and I'll leave the link in the card or description if you're interested. Okay, the cover page is done, and now let's move on to the monthly page. It is such a good chance to apply chessboard on the calendar, and how can I miss it? In order to draw it straight, I start with placing washi tape on, but soon I realize it's a terrible idea. It takes forever to place them, and I can only color half of the black squares at once, as you can see. After the first half, as I'm waiting for it to get dry, I start to work on the left side first, using the stamps for a monthly goal and note. Then on the bottom, I want to draw some elements from the show, so I choose the pills Beth takes every day when she's in the orphanage. And here comes another reason not to use washi tape for this. It is super hard to take them off, and when I want to reuse it for the other half squares coloring, it is totally deformed. So I ended up outlining the boxes and manually painting them. But you know, we learn from our mistakes. After coloring the blocks, the next is to add alphabets A to H and number one to eight around it, just like in the real chessboard. Then finish the outline. 
In order to mimic the chessboard, I have to make the chart 8x8, so I'll leave the last column empty and it still can match the calendar's Monday to Sunday 7 days. As for the top and bottom, I decided to add some chess pieces. And of course, it has to match the real game rule. I used a color graphic one to draw the chess piece on the white boxes and then use Postcard white marker to draw on the black boxes. By the way, each box is 4x4 four four if the number helps. You may notice that I draw those pieces pretty ugly. Um, yes, it is pretty hard to draw everyone exactly the same, but I think my husband is okay with it. And I just realized that I draw the king and queen in the wrong order. Please forgive me about that, just remember to switch them if you're going to recreate this spread. There is no dates on the week and I know it may look a little bit inconvenient, but since I always start the week with Monday, so it is not that hard to use. The next is Habit Tracker, Eating Time and Weight Log. The layout for this spread is always the same for my husband, since he likes to use axis as date, days in the week, while axis as habit, hours, and weight numbers. Before adding this drawing on the right side, I like to introduce the promotion. Promotion in chess is a rule that requires pawn that reaches the 8th rank to be replaced by the player's choice of a bishop, knight, rogue, or queen of the same color. Promotion to a queen is also called queening. So basically, if your pawn reaches the bottom of the other player, then it can become a queen. And that's what I want to express here. It's actually more like the view from the inside of the mirror, saying that the small pawn on the other side has the potential to become a queen. I'm not sure if I explain well, but if you watched the Queen's Gambit last episode, you'll probably remember that in the last game, Beth did a queening, promoting a pawn to a queen, and eventually beats the Russian chess master Vasily Bogov. After finish the drawing, here I want to add more tearing pieces, so again I tape some black paper on the right down corner, trim the extra part away, and then place some washi tape next to it. Okay, time for mood checker. But let me draw another scene from the show first. Beth has been non-stop winning for many games, from beating the whole high school chess club members to winning the state champion. But her first loss happens in Las Vegas during US Open to the previous national champion Benny Watts. To be honest, I really understand how she feels during and after the game. Beth doesn't like losing and always being really aggressive, which also exposes her weakness of being too emotional. She has a hard time dealing with the first failure after always being the winner. But the thing is, you only learn to appreciate some of the most beautiful things when you are at the bottom of the hill. And luckily, she figured it out after, and Benny also becomes her true friend and helps her preparing the final international game later. As for the mood tracker, there are 32 chess pieces in one game, including black and white. So I think that's such a good idea to apply here. As you can see, I'm drawing all the chess pieces to represent 31 days. Except I only draw one queen and one king. And I place them on the day of Christmas and the day I move to the new house. Speaking of which, because of the moving, I may not be able to upload video on schedule next month, so I think I should let you guys know ahead of time, but I'll still try to make it work. Now let's move on to the brain down page. There's another very classic scene from the show, which is Beth imagining the game on the ceiling, all the possible moves and strategies. Super cool and unique. I want to recreate here, so I rotate the notebook upside down first to make it easier to draw. The chess pieces I draw are randomly placed, so please ignore if it doesn't make total sense. If you haven't watched the show yet because you don't know how to play chess, no worries. At the beginning of the show, when Beth met her first teacher, you can pretty much learn the basic rules through his explanation, and that's pretty much all you need to know. Even if you have no idea how chess works, the show won't bore you at all, because the main story is not focusing on how amazing each game is, but how best growth during the process as a chess player and as a girl. Again, I place some tiered black paper in the corner, which can match the clowning scene in the show perfectly. I also place another one on the diagonal corner, so this spread is more balanced. Then I use alphabet stamps to stamp brain dump on the right down corner, and of course, as some washi tapes. And finally, we're on the weekly spread. 
I've been making dash door for every single month in this notebook, so here I'm going to continue it, but make something a little bit different this time. I don't know if it can still be called dash door, but I'm pretty happy when I came up with this idea. So I cut out the shape of a hand holding a queen chess piece and then painted it all black, like a shadow of playing the game. A tip here is that if you're going to use gouache or any other kinds of pigment, don't use too much water. It gives me some trouble of causing the paper too wet and not easy to paint. Then I draw some chess pieces on two sides for the date. Instead of one week per spread, this time I'm trying two weeks per spread. And since there's no decoration to take up the center, I think the space I leave here should be good enough for my husband. But still, I'll let him try first for the first two weeks and then decide if I should continue this layer or not. So in this video, I'm not going to make the week 3 and week 4 pages. But if you like this weekly setup, go ahead and finish it. I think if I were to make the next page, maybe I'll use the same design with white chess pieces? I don't know, we'll see. And if you want to know how the final pages look like, you can also follow me on Instagram where I post all my spreads. At the end, let me place some washi tape on the top and now it's done. As I'm doing final flip through, I want to quickly mention that you can download digital printables of all spreads in this video on my Patreon website. It will be a few bucks per month as subscription and your support will mean a lot to me and this channel. I'll leave the link in the right up corner and in the description box down below. By the way, for the coming 2021, I'll do movie and show themes for the whole year in this black and white bullet journal setup. So by joining my Patreon community, you can vote the movies or shows you like to help me to choose the theme, starting from the next month. Again, The Queen's Gambit is a really good show. If you watch it and like it, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't watched it yet, go take a look and I promise you won't regret. Okay friends, that's all I want to share with you today. If you like this video, please click a like and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to turn on the bell so you'll receive the notifications when I upload new videos. I hope you enjoy watching this plan with me and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye!